Today on Locked On Rockies, Montero wants to bat cleanup, and boy, do I like the sound of that. You are Locked On Rockies, your daily Colorado Rockies podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Rock on Rockies fans, welcome into the Locked on Rockies podcast for today, the 14th day of September in the year 2023. I'm your host of the Locked on Rockies podcast, Paul Holden, bringing you your daily Colorado Rockies talk right here on the Locked on Podcast Network, where you can find your team every day. And if your team is the Colorado Rockies, well, guess what? You're in the right spot. That's what we do around here each and every day is talk Rockies baseball right here on the Locked on Podcast Network. Thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Thank you for finding us on your favorite streaming service services thank you for tuning in and being a part of the locked on rockies youtube channel today's episode is brought to you by jace medical empower yourself when you purchase a jace case providing you with a personal supply of five antibiotics that treat 50 plus infections get yours today at jacemedical.com that's j-a-s-e medical.com you can find us free and streaming on your favorite streaming service. You can also find us on YouTube and on SiriusXM and the SiriusXM app alongside your Colorado Rockies play-by-play coverage. So don't miss out. Check out SiriusXM there as well. Uh, I want to talk Montero more today. We briefly mentioned it a little bit, but then I read this piece from Thomas Harding about how he wanted to step up and be the cleanup batter for the Rockies. And... That is exactly what I want to hear from the guy. And and then the performance of late to back it up. I what I like the most about baseball, what I and this is this is just I'm going straight personal enjoyment level. And this and and on top of what I think will be successful for the Rockies. But what I like to watch and what I like to see and what I like my team to have is exciting offense, power offense. Home runs are rad. Home runs are cool. Extra base hits are cool. It's how I like to play baseball. It's my approach. It was what I wanted to do at the dish was do damage on offense. And the whole time we've had Montero, he has talked about the importance of being a big hitter, about being himself, being the guy to to be in run op, uh, run generating opportunities for the Rockies and be successful. And I absolutely love it. That's the mentality I want I want from Montero. And that's the player I want him to be. He's going to be, if, if, if he turns out to be a success, if he is able to contribute at the major league level, a big part of that reason is going to be his offense. And it's been on full display during this on-base streak. And it's been on full display for a month now, basically. He was ba- looking, I mean, if, especially when you look at his season. When you look at the fact that, here you go, we're giving you the third base starting opportunity in the wake of the Brendan Rodgers injury, we're turning to you, we're counting on you, we're looking to you to not only play a good third base and then also be a contributor on offense. And it didn't work well. And then he goes down to AAA and he mashes yet again. And then he comes back up and he has to wait for his time. He has to wait for his consistent to playing time going and then post trade deadline and then now into august montero has been great and that is huge news for the rockies it's huge news for for montero himself i can't imagine the confidence boost that this stretch is if he is going to give montero and already has what this team needs as they're going through this is confidence as they're going through these 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 tough losses, Montero can look back on this tough stretch of games and say, "I contributed. I was not the reason. I wasn't I wasn't overpowered by pitches or or caught off guard by breaking stuff and striking out." He struck out a lot. He has struck out still a good decent amount as have all of the young Rockies players. But he can say the team overall were were falling short. But me personally, I am finding my groove. I am finding my comfort. I am being someone that can handle major league pitching. I can handle being a major league ball player and someone that plays every day. It's really been 
it's it's one of the most I I might argue this out of the rest of the storylines and out of all the storylines and there's been a lot of them Montero finding his groove and being successful and finishing strong with two and with two months and change of good baseball might be one of if not the biggest storyline of this I See, even as I'm saying it, I don't think that's true because that's overlooking a lot of things we didn't expect from the Rockies to happen this year. And and it, and it kind of misses out, I think, on, on some things that, that are a bigger focus. But this is a big deal. It's a major deal that Montero is finding his groove and finding success for himself. Even in even with the with the with the with the start of the year even with the issues of, of of striking out and 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 such this is a key moment for a key rocky someone the franchise believed in someone the franchise really looked at and and valued highly with how he came here and now he's getting the ability and getting the opportunity to step up and perform because we mentioned this this streak goes back to august but august overall wasn't that great of a month for montero he struck out 30 times in august 30 times easily the most in the in the, in the uh in the season but during that time he also showed his ability to drive in runs 10 rbi two home runs in that month got 15 hits the most he had in in the season at at any point that at that year so the the small steps the going through it the improvements the steps forward we're seeing from rockies players that's what matters it's what matters more than the score at the end of the game in 2023 we we as at this point in the season wins and losses don't matter 100 losses is going to come and happen i care much more that for the last for for a 30 game stretch for a 20 game stretch, if you want to even bring it down further than that, for a, a, a 21, I believe now, for 21 games, Montero has been able to get on base. And that means drawing walks. That means, you know, getting hit by pitches. That means more than just swinging the bat well. Getting walks and getting on base is huge for any Rockies hitter, but especially someone like Montero with his strikeout tendencies. He struck out 10 times this month. So it looks like he's going to, you know, the de- the strikeouts should decrease, hopefully. But I'm not going to just solely focus and hammer in and, and, and hammer in the, the strikeout issues for Montero because that's an issue for every Rocky on the roster. It's what it feels like. The Rockies need to cut strikeouts down on with every player. Doesn't even matter who it is. Even, uh, but... It's really, it's it's so it's a significant late thing to see. It is a significant thing to watch for the rest of 2023, and it's something that we have to keep our focus on. Because if he can emerge, if he can take a step forward, if he can get a solid two full months of offensive production, that is a reason to be excited for the Rockies as we look ahead to 2024 and what this offense could potentially be doing because him paired with Nolan Jones paired with maybe some, you know, a little bit of resurgence there from Chris Bryant. It looks like way too early to get too excited about that, but the offense seems like it can come together. And I don't ever, I don't think it's going to be a dominant offense, but what we, what we've seen at points in this season and what we saw in the series against the Cubs is this offense does have some potential. It's got some pop potential. It's got some professional hitters in Chris Bryant and Charlie Blackman. And it's got some young guys that have a significant upside and leading the way right now and leading the game or leading the way for about 20 for around 20 games now is a significant Rockies uh, young Rockies player that's been looking to make a statement and make it and and, and seize his moment and he's doing so right now. I want to read a little bit from Thomas Harding's piece on MLB.com to give more insight into Montero and uh, him bringing up that he wanted to bat lead off, or not lead off, uh, uh, clean up 
for the Colorado Rockies here. Montero makes case for Rock's cleanup role with latest blast here. And this from MLB.com. We're going to get to that coming up here in segment number two. But before we do that, I want to tell you about our friends at eBay Motors. eBay Motors, passion, drive, and patience. That's what brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED highlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back because with ebay motors you're burning rubber not cash with all the parts you need at the prices you want it's easy to turn your car into the mvp and bring home that win keep your ride or dive alive at ebay.com motors ebay guaranteed fit only available to u.s customers eligible items only exclusions do apply this is the Locked On Rockies podcast for free and streaming on your favorite streaming service. We're also on the Locked On Rockies YouTube channel. You can also find us on SiriusXM and the SiriusXM app. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Thanks for hanging on and rocking and rolling with us through the Colorado Rockies 2023 season with us here on the Locked On Rockies podcast. Talking Montero more, talking he was one of my most anticipated Rockies of the offseason to look for this year, and then the way things were going, I got really nervous, and then the way they were handling things with him up here and what they, how they were going to find playing time for him made me nervous. But Montero has done what you need to do when you're facing some of those challenges. Oh, you got to figure out how you're going to play him? You got to make playing time for him? Well, you just got to make sure that you contribute and are a significant part of the lineup. And that's what Montero has been doing of late. And uh, we read from Montero makes case for Rock's cleanup role with latest blast by Thomas Harding over here on MLB.com. And uh, here's what Montero had to say about being placed in the cleanup spot. I was extremely happy to be in that position, Montero said, with bullpen catcher and uh, Aaron Munoz interpreting. I want to be a cleanup hitter. Honestly, I wanted to show them that I could do it. The fact that Montero's placement in such a key spot would be considered forward thinking speaks volumes. Just a few weeks ago, doing so would have been nuts. Montero started the season as the regular third baseman, but defensive struggles and an unacceptable strikeout rate led to a position change to first base and two options to AAA Albuquerque. Through August 13th, Montero was hitting 192 with strikeouts in 68 of his 164 plate appearances. Veteran C.J. Crone had been traded to the Angels, so Montero was sharing first base with Michael Tolia, but Chris Bryant was on the men from a fractured left index finger and, a finger and aiming to play some first base, while Hunter Goodman was burning up AAA and banging at the Rockies' door. Montero needed to produce to keep on receiving chances. The 25-year-old has responded with a 382, 463, 632 slash line over his past 21 games to force his way into the lineup. On Wednesday, Montero, Montero served as the designated hitter with Bryant, who homered for the second straight game at first base and Goodman in right field. The numbers speak for themselves, said Black, who added that giving Charlie Blackman a day off was the catalyst for the lineup, and they need to put his hottest hitters higher was the philosophy behind it. The bat speed is there. He's laying off the borderline breaking ball down and away a little bit more. We've seen it a couple times this series, getting his pitch, not fouling it off, squaring it up, and putting it in play. He's got power. He's got strength. It's all field hitting. He's been in a good spot. Those are all that's, – that's the response. The reason to be excited about Montero is because he faced the challenge, just like we saw it, it, it with Brendan Rodgers last year with an egregious start, a horrible start. I find it really comforting, and I think it's a really good sign when a player is able to bounce back and go on a significant stretch like this. Brendan Rodgers is a little bit more encouraging because it was an entire season's worth of work, but... We're getting eights. 21 games is a significant chunk. That is a, that is not a small sample size. That is nearly a month of the, of, of the season. That is a good stretch. And that all goes up to basically the bottom point where it was looking at how the heck, like we were mentioning before, how the heck is Montero going to find his way into the lineup by forcing his way in? And he's the type of guy that needed to do that. Montero needed to make his statement, and he's doing so right now. 
So why I believe that this is one of the most important storylines of the thing to watch for the rest of the season for the Rockies is he's going, it's, it's a key discussion. It's, it's a key thing that's going to factor into the future of Charlie Blackman, the future of Chris Bryant, the future of Michael Tolia. The Rockies will have a lot of interesting things to do here because if Montero continues to produce and Chris Bryant's going to play first base, what does what does Michael Tolia go to a right field? Does Michael Tolia become a trade piece? What, how do you address that? There's so many layers to all this situation, but at top, uh, but all that stuff is is something to think about. But it's it's kind of moot if he turns out to be this power threat, this big offensive threat that we thought him to be, or and hoped him to be, the way he's hit into uh, AAA and and what we've seen in the past. Because that's what the Rockies need right now. The Rockies desperately need offensive production and consistent offensive production of, of, of home runs and extra base hits. And that's what Montero is showing off right now. And that is exactly why he should continue to be the cleanup hitter until the, you know, the hot streak wears off. Keep giving himself the challenge. Keep letting him step up. Keep challenging him to be the run producer. Keep putting the spotlight on him to say, this is your moment. Continue to shine. Or, you you know, because you know what else can happen. You, he's been through it this year. So. As we're going through, and as he 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 might be my my number one Rockies player to watch for the rest of the year, his performance, his contribution to the Rockies is is so critical and so crucial. Uh, as the Rockies figure out what's going to happen, as the Rockies figure out their approach to the off season and what they want to do there, it is a big moment for Montero right now in the season, even with the losses and such. This is still Montero's moment, and he needs to continue to to to, to hold on and uh, and make the most out of it, which he is doing so right now. Because you know, it, it, we 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 we've seen how bad it can get, and that strikeout rate especially is the biggest problem. But to to decrease there, to make improvements there, to see the ball, to be more confident at that major league level, all big milestones for Montero to uh, that that it seems like he's hitting. But I'd like to see a little bit more, and I'd like to see a little bit more uh, throughout the rest of this season, especially as uh, we were, were the things to focus on when you're looking at why to tune in, what to focus on, what to watch about the Rockies. He is arguably the Rockies player to watch right now, maybe outside of the return of Chris Bryant uh, for for the future and what 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 what's what the Rockies have on their roster. He's he's someone that. We'll see. We'll see how the rest of the year pans out. But for me, that's where I'm focused at. That's what I'm looking at. Um, and uh, that's where my head's at when it comes to Montero. Uh, there's more in that piece uh, that I think you should go read from Thomas Harding because it, it, it dives into Nolan Jones has some uh, some great stuff. Talks about how Montero has been making adjustments. So uh, make sure you go check out the rest of that article. Montero makes case for Rock's cleanup role, uh, cleanup role with latest blast from Thomas Harding on MLB.com. And uh, we are going to look ahead now for the Rockies to tonight's matchup against the Giants. And we're going to look at the NL wildcard standings uh, to see how big of a series this is for the San Francisco Giants as they head to Coors Field. Okay, uh, let's do that coming up in segment number three. Before we do that, though, got to tell you about our new sponsor, Jace Medical. Modern medical treat care and treatment are important, but our global supply chains are fragile. Things like pandemics, natural disasters, and foreign travel may cut off you from the treatment you need. Jace Medical is your solution. Just fill out their online form, and one of Jace Medical's board-certified physicians will review it to determine whether medications are safe and appropriate. Then Jace will send your prescriptions to one of their partner pharmacies where your order will be filled and mailed directly to your home. You can also send your physician a message for answers to treatment-related questions at any time. Everyone should be empowered to care for themselves and their loved ones during the unexpected. That's why Jace Medical offers the Jace case. Save more than $360 by getting these antibiotics with Jace Medical plus an additional $20 off by using the code LOCKEDON 
at checkout on jacemedical.com. That's J-A-S-E medical.com. Don't forget to use that promo code for $20 off at jacemedical.com. This is the Locked on Rockies podcast for free and streaming on your favorite streaming service, bringing you your daily Colorado Rockies talk right here on the Locked on Podcast Network and the Locked on Rockies YouTube channel where you can find your team every day. If it is the Colorado Rockies there on the uh, Locked on Rockies YouTube channel, thank you so much for tuning in. Check us out on SiriusXM and the SiriusXM app as well. Uh, Folks, big series for the Giants. Every series is big for the Giants, and uh, they head to Coors Field here really uh, in a in a spot thinking that they are going to cruise and continue to dominate because it has been all Giants all season long. The Rockies this year have uh, only beat the Giants once. San Francisco has uh, uh, won eight of nine ball games against the Colorado Rockies. And this includes trips to Coors Field. Uh, this is the first trip to Cor- back to Coors Field, though, uh, since uh, June for the Giants, though. So haven't been here in a little bit. Rockies have been swept. Uh, the last series were swept by the Giants and uh, are looking to get their first NL series win of the year. And the Giants have won four of their last five, including a uh, a, a sweep against the Rockies there. So uh, that's five of their last six, if you want to go up there. And uh, every win matters for them as they are a half game back in the wild card standings here behind Arizona. Uh, the Cubs remain two ahead of Arizona there, even after they have uh, they've been going through a little bit of uh, a tough stretch of late uh, and uh, Arizona. No one's really dominating right now in this wild card race. Uh, everyone's kind of playing similar ball over their stretches. Everyone's no one's on a big key winning streak here for uh, for them to be in any sort of, of, of a situation. But these games are critical. I mean, any any loss for San Francisco could put them behind multiple teams in the wild card race. And this one's going to come down to the wire for all of these teams, Arizona, San Francisco, Cincinnati, and Miami. And uh, San Francisco feeling like they, they're, they're getting a little bit of a reprieve here playing the Rockies. So really could sink an NL West rivals a, a playoff hopes with a, with a series win here and making things tough at Coors Field and uh I you know for me if I, if I for my rooting interest outside the Rockies I think it would be cool to see Cincinnati and Miami make it in there over Arizona and San Francisco but that shows my biases as well but key key uh series for San Francisco so they're going to be coming to the yard bringing it every day and they're going to be coming to the yard ready to uh ready to take down these Rockies players so as the Rockies uh, get Chris Bryant back, as they get their first series win in a while, they got to look to try to build and start rolling a little bit here and make them really nervous in San Francisco because it's a four-game set. So, I mean, this is an opportunity for, for for both teams to really impact that race. If the if the Rockies sweep or, or win this series, that's going to really punch a hole in San Francisco's chances uh, depending on how – uh, Cincinnati, Miami, and Arizona do, and they're really not that far off from the Cubs or Philly. If the uh, if San Francisco continues to get stay on a hot streak, and uh, Philly and the Cubs and Arizona can uh, continue to be playing uh, mid baseball, Arizona's actually been uh, six and four over the last ten. The only team to be above five hundred in their last ten. Uh, out of the, the the teams in the race, a sweep of the Rockies for San Francisco mixed with with struggles from those other teams would would not put only San Francisco in the playoff hunt, but would put San Francisco higher up in the wild card standings, making them a lot more comfy and a lot more uh, established and a lot less worried than than these other teams. So this series is going to have a key key moment for the uh, uh, for the Giants here. As they're looking to 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 not not just they're looking to sweep this series. Absolutely, they're they are look if if they can sweep this series and and they certainly have to believe that they can with the way they've handled the Rockies this year. Uh, that would be a key moment for them, uh, especially with now in in the first spot. The 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 Phillies are four and six 
over their last games, but they're playing St. Louis. And the Cubs in Arizona are going to be playing each other starting tomorrow. So those two teams are going to be beating up on each other. So the NL wildcard race can look really different at the end of this weekend, depending how this San Francisco and uh, Colorado series goes. So uh, on the bump tonight, Logan Webb for the Giants and Chase Anderson for the Rockies. Chase Anderson 0-5 this year with a 6.49 ERA, a 1.53 whip, and 68 innings pitched. Uh, Struck out 50 to 24 walks, giving up 17 home runs this season. Uh, On the other side, Logan Webb, 10 and 12 with a 3.40 ERA, a whip of 1.08, 193 innings pitched, 179 hits given up this year, 177 strikeouts to 29 walks and 20 home runs. Yes, just to to reiterate that again, uh, almost uh, almost 130 more innings than Chase Anderson, not quite 130. Uh, Logan Webb has uh, double the strikeouts. and a little more than double the strikeouts, but has only walked five more batters than Chase Anderson and given up three more home runs. That's the interesting statistics there, especially when you're looking at what Chase, the, the Chase Anderson and this Giants team, just like they showed against the Rockies last time, can hit home runs and they can hit home runs at Coors Field. So Chase Anderson's got to be sharp and he's got to be key. He's key to starting this series off on the right foot. He's got to give the Rockies a chance. He's got to keep the Rockies in this one. And the Rockies offense has to show up and provide some run support as well. So big moments here for the wild card race. And unfortunately, it doesn't include the Rockies making the postseason, but they can shake up who makes the postseason. We'll see how it all goes down tonight with first pitch at 640 Mountain Time. Folks, that's going to do it for today's episode of Lockdown Rockies. Thank you so much for tuning in and joining us today and for making us your first listen of the day. We're free and streaming on your favorite streaming services. We're also on the Lockdown Rockies YouTube channel where your subscription is the easiest and best way to help the show. You can also find us on SiriusXM and the SiriusXM app. Hey, for your second listen, why don't you go check out the Locked On Avalanche, Locked On Broncos, Locked On Buffs, and Locked On Nuggets podcasts. Lots going on in Colorado sports. Locked On Podcast Network's got you covered. Until next time, this is Paul Holden saying so long from the Locked On Rockies podcast.